Hello everybody, this is Dr. David Jockers and today we're talking about how to eat keto at restaurants. You know, many of us are on a low carb ketogenic diet and we've had this experience where we've gone out maybe to somebody's house or an event or you know, at a restaurant, we were at lunch with a friend or dinner with a friend and we we're like, okay, what do I get that's low carb and ketogenic friendly? And I'm going to go through that in this short training, exactly what to look for and what to get. So when you're at a restaurant, you have a game plan, you have a strategy. So let's dive into this. If you don't know me, my name's Dr. David Jockers. I am a doctor of natural medicine, live just outside of Atlanta. I have a clinic called Exodus Health Center on the northwest side, Cobb County uh, of Atlanta. And I uh, speak all around the country on a number of different health topics, but really have a specialty in functional nutrition and the ketogenic diet. And this is my beautiful wife, Angel, my little boys, David and Joshua. And so jumping into this, I mean, on a ketogenic, low carb diet, there's three basic principles to remember. Number one, reduce, really eliminate sugar, processed sugar, things that turn into sugar that we're going to talk about, and grains. So rice, um, what else is a grain? Quinoa, obviously breads, oatmeal, right? Things like that. Those are all considered grains, and those are things that turn right into sugar. We want to get rid of those. We want to get rid of bad fats. It's going to be things like corn oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, cottonseed, peanut oil. So we find these in a lot of condiments, like salad dressings, for example. So that's a really big key because, you know, for many of us, we're choosing salads, but we're not really putting a whole lot of thought into these salad dressings. We want to get rid of those really bad, uh, toxic, uh, processed vegetable oils. We want to do a lot of good fats. So you can see the picture of avocado. Um, also, olives, olive oil are really, really good. Um, coconut products, coconut oil, coconut butter, coconut flakes can be awesome. Um, grass-fed butter. We're going to talk about more of the these kinds of foods, these good fats that we want, and then change the meat that we eat. We want to get rid of grain-fed, commercially raised animal products as much as possible, and really stick with grass-fed, organic, sustainably raised. That's really what we're looking for. And so if we have the choice of a restaurant, it's not always the case, right? I know in some circumstances, um, we're not able to choose, right? We have a lunch meeting or whatever it is, you know, we're going out with bosses or, you know, we're meeting people at a party. We don't have the choice of the restaurant, but there are other circumstances where we do have the choice. And when we have the choice, this is what we want to look for. We want to look for pasture raised meats. I mean, that's one of the biggest things I look for when I'm choosing a restaurant. Like if I'm taking my wife on a date um, or if, you know, we're in another area of the country and we are looking for a restaurant to go out to, I'm going to look up on Google. I'm going to look for restaurants that have grass-fed beef, that have organic meats, right? This is what I'm looking for, farm to table sometimes. You know, that's the kind of thing you're looking for. And you know what? Today's day and age, there's more of these types of restaurants than ever before. It's not as hard to find them as you may think, especially if you're in a metropolitan area. If you're in the country, then it's definitely going to be a lot harder. But again, if you're near some sort of metropolitan area, then um, it shouldn't be as hard as you th you may think it is. So you're looking for pasture-raised meats, wild-caught seafood as opposed to farmed, um, ideally organic produce. And we'll talk about the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15 in this presentation. And you're looking for low-carb options, right? Options that don't have chips and potatoes and um, you know things like that and breads and whatnot. Okay, and we'll talk about that as we go on. So we want to avoid, obviously, buffets. Um, you know, honestly, sometimes buffets can be okay, but oftentimes you don't really know what's on top of a lot of the uh, the foods in there. And oftentimes it's really bad oils and sugars and stuff like that, as opposed to if you go to a restaurant and you're talking with a waiter, oftentimes you can get something customized to a low-carb diet. Um, the all you can eat, typically it's very cheap, inexpensive um, food, and they're using a lot of gluten and uh, processed vegetable oils. My experience is all you can eat along with buffets typically um, are going to be very problematic when you're trying to be on a low carb, really healing diet, right? 
And so not just necessarily a low carb or ketogenic diet, but really a healing diet where we're getting rid of the bad fats. Um, if they have overly cheap prices, if you're like, that's too good to be true, it is too good to be true. It's low quality. So stay away from that. And as much as possible, obviously, grain fed meats, you want to avoid that. I will say if you can't choose a restaurant um, and you end up at a restaurant that does have a buffet, it's not the worst. I mean, obviously, you can really do your best to try to choose vegetables, meat. Um, you know, you can use things like butter, stuff like that typically. Um, and try to find the best that you can. But if you're actually choosing the restaurant, better off to avoid that. Um, there's a restaurant that my wife and I go to in the Atlanta area called Ted's. And Ted's is nice because I'm able to get grass-fed beef, right? So I'm able to, or they have, they have uh, grass-fed beef, they have bison as well, which is a really clean protein. Some restaurants have lamb. Lamb is a really clean protein. Um, other restaurants have duck sometimes organic chicken or turkey, organic poultry, wild caught fish. So you're always looking for that clean protein. And I know at Ted's, which is a Ted Turner's restaurant, they've got bison. Okay. And typically they're serving their meals with a vegetable and with like fries that they make. And so of course we ask not for the fries because those are high carb and inflammatory. Instead, we get double vegetables and we'll also get guacamole, right? So they have either sliced avocado or guacamole and we'll get things like asparagus or broccoli and we'll get guacamole, which I find is tastes amazing on a burger, believe it or not. If you put guacamole on your grass-fed burger or on your bison or lamb or whatever it is, it tastes unbelievable. Now, now you've got this really good fat, okay? And so if a restaurant has guacamole, that's typically gonna be a, a decent restaurant to go to because you know you've got this good fat that's going to be healthy for your body. So you've got the avocado in there. Um, now, unfortunately at Ted's, their olive oil is only 60% olive and 40% canola. So a lot of restaurants don't have true olive oil. Some of the Italian restaurants that really pride themselves in being, you know, this Italian, this great olive oil and great Italian flavors, not just like a pizza restaurant, but instead just really, you know, they take pride in this kind of Italian food. Uh, oftentimes we'll have good olive oil, but you can really have to ask. And um, it's always best to ask the manager and sometimes the waiters don't know. And what you can let them know is that you have a significant sensitivity to corn and canola and soy. And if you say that, then they're going to really hunt down the ingredients because obviously the last thing they want is somebody getting sick in their restaurant. Not good for PR um, if somebody's vomiting right there at the table or somebody goes into anaphylactic shock and they've got to bring the, uh, the, the, the ambulance by. That's not good for business. So they'll figure out what they, what they need to do there if you let them know that. Um, but yeah, you want these healthy restaurants. Some restaurants like Thai restaurants will have coconut milk. Um, so, you know, this is what you're looking for, right? So one of these types of healthy fats, a lot of restaurants have true butter, which is not grass fed butter, but it's at least true butter. And, and you know what, my wife and I will bring grass fed butter or ghee to restaurants at times because we want more of these healthy fats. And, you know, that's a big part of a low carb ketogenic diet. I want to feel satiated at the end of my meal. I don't want just protein and vegetables because if I do that, I'm going to feel really hungry still. I'm not going to have that sense of satiety. So for me, it's worth it to bring the right type of butter or maybe bring my own olive oil or um, even an avocado if I need to, to a restaurant so I can enjoy that um, or coconut oil or, you know, whatever it is. So I can enjoy that meal and not feel hungry afterwards, feel really satiated and, uh, you know, help my body to be able to produce the ketones. So um, don't feel bad about that. Now here, here's uh, some things to look out for because this is where sugar hides, right? And a lot of people don't fully realize all the different places where, where they may be getting sugar and carbs. So snacks or granola bars, okay? Um, you know, definitely avoid that. Cereals, of course, oatmeal, things like that. Definitely avoid those things. Now in restaurants, sometimes they have dried fruit, okay, on salads and things like that. That's like a really concentrated form of sugar. So you got to avoid that. Um, a lot of protein bars in general, like if you're going out uh, to a grocery store and you get protein bars, meal replacements, you got to look out for the ingredients. A lot of them have sugars. In restaurants, these bottled sauces, dressings, condiments, that's a really, really big one. So you want to talk to the 
the waiter and just ask them about what sort of sauces are on there. You know, I always say anything that says glazed basically means sugar, right? If it says glazed salmon, that means lots of sugar and syrupy sugar like corn syrup on salmon. That's basically what it means. So you want to avoid that. Um, a lot of dairy products, right? Like sweetened yogurts, things like that. Uh, oftentimes uh, have extra sugar in them. Of course, we, we know breads do. And, you know, this is another thing I like about this restaurant, Ted's, is they bring out little uh, cucumbers, little capers, which are like basically slightly fermented cucumbers, salted and fermented. They're not fully pickles yet. They're like halfway between cucumbers and pickles. And a lot of restaurants now are starting to do that where they'll bring out like a little vegetable instead of the bread. So if you say, hey, can you hold the bread and dice up some cucumber? You know, cucumbers are a low carb uh, vegetable that's very good for your digestive tract, really good for your skin health. So it's a great appetizer and it can taste really good. And oftentimes if they either have sea salt at the restaurant or I'll bring my own Himalayan salt, you just put a little salt on the cucumber. It's just so good. It really preps your body for healthy digestion, helps stimulate digestive juice production because cucumbers have a carminative aspect where they help with the production of uh, digestive juices. So, um, so that's a really good idea. Lower calorie drinks, like um, oftentimes coffees, they'll have extra sugar added. So you just got to watch out. You know, obviously just a straight black coffee is fine or you can put your own butter in it um, is great. But look out for uh, sweetened teas, of course, juices, energy drinks. Um, also, again, desserts, you know, typically for most restaurants, you know, loaded with sugar. Um, if you're going to a breakfast place or something like that, and they've got waffles or pancakes, definitely avoid those. I think most of us know a lot of these things. Okay. So when we're looking at rest restaurants, you know, ideally we find one that has organic ingredients, but again, that's not always going to be the case. So if we're getting non-organic, we want to look at that clean 15. So you see the dirty dozen here where it's got apples, celery, tomatoes. You know, I mentioned cucumbers, and for me, it's like, okay, I'll still do the cucumber, even if it's uh, not organic, but just kind of take into consideration these things here um, that are in the Dirty Dozen, which most of them are fruits. And if you're on a low-carb diet, you're going to avoid those anyways, and really try to stick with the Clean 15. So avocados, onions, right? Um, what else is low-carb there? Cauliflower, asparagus. So those are really good options. Um, and broccoli really really should be on there. Okay. Broccoli is typically low in pesticides. So, uh, so that should be fine as well. Cabbage, as you can see there. So, um, those foods are lower in pesticides and okay to get, uh, non-organic. You're not going to get, you know, this tremendous pesticide load. So look out for those. And then, you know, before going to a restaurant, for example, let's say you're going to a family party at a restaurant that you didn't get the chance to choose. Okay. Let's say it's a, children's party um you know and it's at i don't know crispy cream or um you know a place like that some sort of a uh chuck e cheese or something it's really hard to get some sort of a healthy menu item or like a chick-fil-a or something it's hard to get many healthy menu items there so typically what i'm going to do is eat beforehand so i'm not hungry okay so if you're able to eat beforehand that's a really good idea when you do go like if you're gonna order which you don't always have to, but if you're going to, try to choose some sort of veggie, like a salad or something, maybe a healthy protein if possible. Of course, ask for olive oil or maybe sometimes bring your own, right? Bring your own stuff, avocado, um, butter, and use that generously. Get a lot of those fats in there. Again, that's going to create the satiety. Of course, stay away from grains and desserts. And another really good idea at a lot of these restaurants is also bringing digestive enzymes and probiotics. You know, the reason why is uh, obviously those are good to take uh, anyways on a regular basis, but at restaurants, you don't always know all the ingredients. And so if you have a sensitivity to something, um, bringing some enzymes some probiotics with you can help your body deal with that with less inflammatory reactions. So um, so really good ideas as far as that goes. So anyways, I hope this has been really helpful. Um, again, uh, my wife and I will bring our own grass-fed butter. We'll bring salt. We'll bring supplements, uh, you know, things like that. Oftentimes into restaurants, we'll bring kind of like our own little kit um, on a regular basis. And we don't feel ashamed about it at all. And the reason why is because we just know we're doing what's right for our body. And I don't think that we should take shame in doing what's right for our body. I don't think that that's a healthy mentality. 
So our family, right? Not not all of our family members eat healthy, and sometimes they choose, you know poor restaurants from our perspective to go to for parties and sometimes we just end up at you know not great restaurants you know just due to relationships and things like that but we always do the best we can to make good choices and again we will bring our own stuff in right our own condiments things like that with uh and and you know it's just kind of this level of of uh, we should just take pride in the idea that hey we are taking good care of our body that is a great thing and i'm not going to compromise that just because i'm at a, you know a restaurant that doesn't serve what what uh what i want to put in my body i'm not going to compromise that and that's a great stance and then you just love on the people that you're with because again it's not really about the food it's about the company and the relationship so just remember that you just love on the people that you're with um, and make good choices with your diet. And you know what? That's just going to help your mood, your energy, all of those things. So you can be a better, more productive, more loving person. So that's really what it's all about. And uh, of course, that's why you know, many of us are following a ketogenic diet or at least interested in following some sort of a low carb, anti inflammatory nutrition plan um, is for those reasons. So we can have improved blood sugar stability and better focus and concentration. We can look our best, feel our best, reverse or reduce our risk of chronic disease. You know, that's what it's all about. And if you want to go deeper in this topic, you want to get more hands-on information on how to follow a ketogenic or low-carb diet, I do have an online course, Navigating the Ketogenic Diet uh, with drjockers.com. So anyways, hope you guys really enjoyed today's training and we'll be back for a future online training. God bless everybody.